see what we got going on this week. Damn. It's been 20 weeks of going hard. You know, where I increased my activity before, at, where I cut out carbs. And here I am 20 weeks later, no results. 600 calorie deficit, 200, 800, 1,600. You still aren't losing weight, the numbers have to be off. So we're getting a test done that tells me exactly how many calories I burn naturally. So this proves that he's in a calorie deficit? They kept telling me that these trackers are usually wrong. My aura ring is accurate. I think it's stress. Like the dude's always thinking about work. Quitting my business isn't an option. We've got to try something new. Can I lose this weight by doing inner work? When we finally soften into our physical practices, our bodies fall into equilibrium. When I'm in a relaxed state, I lean out and I lean out a lot. It's time to do the one thing that we were told to do, but we never did. So guys, Derek, morepletesmortates.com. Today we're going to be talking about Charlie Rocket again. This is a very charitable and admirable human being. He does great fucking things all the time. You know, like pretty much his entire life is dedicated to helping those in need and uh, just being a great human being. However, one thing he has struggled with recently, and I guess his entire life overall, but he has successfully, you know, completed before and then kind of fell off the wagon and is now struggling even more so is with weight loss. This was a transformation he had years ago. I did it before. I'm about to do it again. I need some rocket gang love and support in the comments. Give me some rockets in the comments below. Boost me up. It's time to do this again. I need all the good energy I can get. Let's go, guys. The rocket is back. So get on him for staying motivated. And the reason why, you know, he might be so demoralized prior to this post, and he seemingly was, was his efforts not resulting in any appreciable change whatsoever and actually regressing in his weight loss journey, despite the fact that he was eating in a deficit for like fucking months on end, doing excessive amounts of cardio, getting blood work done, getting... Like, he, this is the first video we did. He was only eating 2,200 calories, apparently. He started at 229. And then I think months later, he got up to, he weighed at 235. So he's making reverse. He was going backwards, essentially. Um, he's lifting, apparently. He was running a shit ton. He was doing all the right things, tracking his food, using an aura ring to track his sleep metrics, getting blood work done. And it wasn't moving the needle. The needle. Can you fucking talk? Then, in later, he got prescribed something called semaglutide. This was a story he posted. My new medication just came in the mail too. This is gonna help me big time with my insulin resistance. So again, this is not like an insulin resistance reversing drug necessarily. Rather, it is something that crushes your appetite, slows gastric emptying, and is a synthetic analog for stimulating uh, GLP-1. So the GLP-1 um, receptor agonist semaglutide is very fucking potent for weight loss. And it's because it basically like tricks you into thinking you're full. You have a reduced gastric emptying, like I said, is one of the main mechanisms of action. And even people who have like zero willpower, like morbidly obese individuals who are, you know, self-induced diabetics, essentially, these individuals lose on average like 10, 20, 30, 40 plant can't even fucking talk. Like I said, 40 plus pounds in some cases. Like it's absolutely nuts. I've done many videos on GLP-1 agonists in the past. And I think uh, it's a class of medications that has been um, severely overlooked by the bodybuilding community, especially during contest prep, because I've seen a lot of guys abuse the shit out of their brains and hearts with high doses of clenbuterol, T3, um, Adderall, a bunch of like hardcore stimulants that fuck with your dopaminergic system. Like so many things that may have otherwise been, I don't know, maybe your risk would have been much lower had you known about something like this. I'm not saying, you know, replace that for this or anything, but it's just interesting that something like this has gone under the radar in the bodybuilding community for so long. And like, I hadn't even heard about it until, I don't know, a year ago or so. Um, when uh, Steve started talking about it first, I think. Um, we started talking about it on uh, Super Physiological Man podcast, and then I kind of, uh, you know, I tried it myself, and a lot of individuals have uh, seen in real time how absolutely mind-boggling this stuff is in its actual applications in a clinical setting for obesity management. So he got prescribed this not that long ago, and presumably he's been on it, but even that, with the most potent 
obesity management drug essentially on earth. He is still in the low 230s apparently. So this was, he was 235 um, in February and then here he is um, in May. La uh, let's see what the weigh-in is. Last week, 230. It's been 20 weeks of going hard, you know, where I increased my activity for at where I cut out carbs. And here I am 20 weeks later, no results. So 20 weeks of cutting, of cutting. Now I say that with, you know, because realistically, if he was actually in a deficit, he would have lost weight. The fact that he's still at 235 and he's just basically, you know, fluctuated up and down shows that something he is doing scientifically is not resulting in a net deficit. The guy is either reducing you know his meat on a daily basis unknowingly he is either overeating and doesn't know how to count all of his condiments and shit properly i would doubt that it's a hormonal deficiency at this point because he has elaborate blood work and has like in the last video we did he had like 50 fucking medications on his table dude it was intense um i don't know if i can see if i can find that shot really fucking quick here probably oh yeah here we go Boom. Like these are all prescription bottles. Some of these might be, you know, like compounding pharmacy supplements, but in general, like these are all probably pharmaceuticals. Um, and is there, you know, testosterone in one of these in a vial in one of these resealable bottles? Is there, you know, thyroid hormones in these? There's GLP-1 agonist somewhere. Um, here's a normal OTC supplement, but this other shit, this is all from a pharmacy. So like the guy has a boatload of pharmaceuticals at his disposal, like presumably whatever deficiencies or imbalances he may have had from an endocrine perspective have been manually corrected. And he's still in the same boat, which to me sort of indicates a lack of adequate tracking and or I don't know, like, like what, else, what else could it be, bro? Like, to be honest, at this point, um, it's physically impossible for the what he is saying he is doing to um, not be losing weight at this point unless his body's just fighting back so much that he literally, when he's not on camera, he just like, sits there like a dead fucking zombie, essentially, uh, which I assume is not the case. The guy is uh, seemingly doing a lot of stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. And he does a shit ton of activi activity, seemingly. But the diet, you know, I think a lot of people who think they're tracking just aren't tracking correctly, dude. So let's go back to the uh, the video here. See what we got going on this week. In the caption, I know everyone, including myself, has been questioning the numbers and calories. The first thing someone thinks is I don't count or track my calories properly, or someone might assume I cheat on my diet. If these thoughts have crossed your mind, please know I've been under the supervision of four people. We monitor, we track, we experiment, we are at all at a loss. Even the doctors, the human biologists, we are all stumped on how this is possible. It's been 20 weeks of going hard and running many different experiments, yet still not getting any results. I decided to get a body scan to find out what my resting metabolic rate is. It's 2,184 calories per day. Many people say that the trackers are up to 50% inaccurate, but this just proves that all along my trackers and my aura ring were right. So, like to me, I don't mean to laugh in like a mean way. I just mean like the aura ring is not the end all be all when it comes to tracking. Like this is something I use it personally, but it is not something I trust entirely for. Um, like if I wanted an accurate assessment of my sleep metrics, for example, like I would go get a legitimate sleep study done. This is something I can use on a day-to-day -day basis. So it gives me good longitudinal data because I can't go into a fucking like experimental, you know, like clinic every single day to monitor myself. But these kind of like, you know, calorie tracking, like software devices, the fucking things you wear to bed, like these are not like go by the scale, bro. Like if your scale is not going up or down, like that is the literal physical representation if you are in a deficit or not. So anyways, he says, I've been burning more calories than I consume 90% of the days during the, this 20 weeks. So like, if that were the case, it would be physically impossible for you to be the same weight. Like that, that's just not the case. I have posted all the body scan results on my stories for y'all to see. So it's time to go all in on the inner work. And it's like, this is the thing that is a bit, you know, unsettling is the fact that he's getting away from practical application tips that are going to actually be utilized from a nutrition perspective or a hormonal optimization perspective because he's seemingly you know perfected it all he's already got the exercise dialed in he's got the nutrition dialed in his hormones are dialed in he's literally on the fucking most potent appetite suppressing drugs at this point but now he needs to do deep subconscious work 
It's honest, open and vulnerable, but it's the only thing we haven't tried yet. And I honestly think it could be the answer. My body needs to get into a relaxed state. My body needs to let go of stress and tension. When I get into a theta state, my body leans out and the weight starts fall, starts falls off. Yes, yeah, starts falls off. I did not say that wrong. This past week, I've been documenting everything and I've posted all of my stories. I've started acupuncture, Qui Gong. I might've said that wrong. Healing sessions, breath work with Lucas Mack, weekly massages, meditation. I want to take all of y'all on this new journey with me. I know we're going to figure this out because one thing I don't do is give up. So it's like, if the law of thermodynamics did not apply to you, like how would you have gained the weight to begin with that got you to, you know, to the point you're at now relative to where you were at your peak weight loss? Like what happened at this point, you know? So, yeah, you know, he's older now. You know, it's entirely possible that his metabolism has slowed down, like to some extent. But again, he's not an old guy. Like I think he's in his thirties, and he has the assistance of hormonal support at this point now. Like if anything, one thing I can say, my access to food and my work lifestyle at this point is way more conducive to not losing weight. I used to get shredded way easier when I was in university despite the fact that I knew way less. <laughs> Reason being is not because I have become stupider over the years or things have gotten more complicated, rather it is because my fucking kitchen is right over there. Like when I was in my early 20s, this is uh, or like 18, 19, 20, 21, um, 22, and I'm in university and I'm you know walking around campus, I have part-time work, I have like dates I'm trying to go on, I'm trying to work out, I'm trying to do cardio, I'm trying to, like balance, also do my homework, study for exams. Like there were so many things being balanced simultaneously and many of them because it was, you know, way more cost efficient to transit everywhere or walk everywhere too. I was getting way more steps in. I had less opportunity to eat and I would often leave the house with just what I had for my meals for the day. And by the time I'd get home, I'd be exhausted and it's, you know, time for bed. And there wasn't even an opportunity to cheat on the diet because I couldn't even afford to buy cheat food out, you know, when I was out of the house anyways, I could not justify it. And when, when you just have your shit packed in pre-packed, you know, Tupperware containers and you are at school and at part-time work and at this and at that, you cannot physically cheat. <laughs> Whereas when you're sitting in a desk even if I'm like working out regularly, I literally have an elliptical like right fucking over in the other room here. Like it's not hard for me to give into cravings. It's actually far easier now. So despite the fact that my knowledge is way more than it was back then, it's a lot harder to lose weight. I know I can get shredded at any point if I wanted to. I just know that it's harder now because of the adherence and willpower and just the logistics of the situation. So for him, I'm going to assume that something he is doing is not matching what his previous lifestyle was. I think the fact that he has hormones on his side now, medications, experts fucking helping him and shit. He says he's tracking correctly and his aura ring is correct and this and that, but ultimately, if you were burning more calories than you were taking in, burning more calories than you take in 90% of the days, it would be physically impossible unless you were burning like one calorie on those days to not have be you know, lower in weight at this point. It would, it would be physically impossible. I think people overlook things as basic as olive oil still, the things that they cook their shit in, things that are still contributing to the caloric intake that go totally overlooked. You know, I used to have salads thinking like, oh, you know, these croutons, this, you know, this lettuce, it equals probably roughly equal this. And then, you know, I'd put Caesar dressing on it, craft Caesar dressing. <laughs> yeah, and I would ballpark what I thought it was. And then it found out when I, when I actually like weighed it, literally to the gram, weighed out the dressing to the gram, weighed the crouton to the gram and broke it all down. I was like, Jesus Christ, like I am basically eating like a cheeseburger and fries for a fucking salad, bro. Like that's how ridiculous it was. Excuse my burp, I just fucking burped on camera. It's tough, man, because especially there are genetic predispositions like satiety signaling, appetite, um, how many fat cells you have at birth versus the next guy. A lot of people that stay lean all the time, it's simply a result of being satiated eating less. You know, it's not individuals who are just like burning way fucking more calories. In some cases it is, it's like super active individuals who don't give into cravings and whatnot or have like way higher willpower. But oftentimes it's individuals who just seamlessly are less hungry and also have less dopaminergic drive to like eat shitty food because they're less rewarded by it. So individuals that struggle are oftentimes guys that have like a poor feedback system essentially or are, you know, seeking 
comfort in food and trying to get a dopamine hit. Um, this is very common as well. They're not even necessarily hungry. It's their brain just like telling them to eat shit. It's almost like, you know, busting a nut essentially for them. And I'm not saying that these are all definitive, you know, causes for this guy, but I think it's highly unlikely that he is actually hitting his calorie intake. And if he is, like drop another hundred off. And then like, what happens? Do you not lose weight still? Like what? It, it, it just doesn't make sense. I did a video a while ago on the guy who starved himself for a year straight. This guy was in a way worse boat than Charlie Rocket in terms of morbid obesity. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Perhaps it was in my first video where I discussed the guy who lost like, I think it was like 300 fucking pounds or something by not eating for a year. Like when you actually break it down by... Um, here we go. When you break it down by 276 pounds in a year. So this guy, these were his pants before, and this is him after. Like he literally ate nothing. So guaranteed calorie deficit. Was this guy in a more metabolically advantageous position than Charlie Rocket necessarily at baseline? You know, presumably no. Presumably this guy was indeed in a boat where he gave into cravings. He was not satiated easily. He other, like how else do you get this fat essentially without you know, having a fucked up relationship with food, essentially, like, you know, you're not healthy. And then he underwent extreme fasting. Like this might be the world record for fasting. I don't even know, but it's fucking intense. So he did not eat for a year, lost 276 pounds. Like Charlie Rocket, do you really think that if you just stopped eating, I'm not saying to do this, by the way, I'm just saying like the laws of thermodynamics, laws of thermodynamics still apply just the same to you. So, you, you know, it's not about, yeah, like, sure, you know, cortisol, stress response, impact on your sleep quality, these things are all impactful on your hormone synthesis, your balancing of hormones, how you are going to, um, how insulin sensitive you are. These are all like impactful and important things and they do impact your energy expenditure at the end of the day. But ultimately, even if things are like wildly fucked up, like you're not gonna be burning less than like a thousand calories a day. Like even if you sat at a desk all day. So it's not something that, I'm not saying like starve yourself necessarily. Like I, by all means, the way to make weight loss sustainable is to find some sort of routine you can actually stick to to keep the weight off after the fact. But the fact remains that you are not doing the full blown, you know, you're not, you're not in a deficit. You know, that's plain as day, unfortunately, what it is. And every time, you know, somebody wants to debate some sort of like weird, you know, random side tangent of why, you know, being too fucking stressed can somehow make it so you burn like 100 calories a day instead of, you know, 3,000. Like, no, bro. Like, there's a reason why in 365 days, he lost, like, this is not that far off of a pound a day, bro. So, and if you think about it, like how many calories are in a pound and then how many, how many calories did this guy burn in a, in a year in order to lose 276 pounds? Like how much did his metabolism really slow down over that year of literally not eating where he still lost 276 pounds? Like there was still a significant amount of calories being burned even during the point when this guy was, you know, at his absolute metabolic shutdownness. You know, if that was a real thing, we would have seen that represented and he would have stalled you know, in an attempt to save him from withering away into nothingness, he would have, you know, somehow just stagnated eating zero. He would have, you know, started like sustaining on fucking air, but that's not the case because that's not how it works, unfortunately. So I was hoping there'd be like a long form video. Like it's weird reacting to these like reels or like one minute clips. Like he has so much footage and so much context that I feel like is missing that would be insightful to respond to and talk about. But it's like, he gets all these experts and he has like a one second clip because it's all you can fit in a reel. But his YouTube doesn't seem to have any of the full videos. So like, I don't know where the full videos go, what he does with the footage or what, but like, I think some of these videos should come on, get on his channel in long form. Like he just has a fuck ton of shorts here. And then uh, nothing in the past like year about the weight loss, you know? Like I just see this clip of a guy being like, it's cause you're stressed. And then like that, that's it. Like no context whatsoever. So see what we got going on anyway, I really hope he gets, you know, things on track, but ultimately at the end of the day, that is still my stance on it. I do not think this, you know, disproves the standard laws of dieting or anything like that. And if anything, like it just is another opportunity to show that you do not actually have your metabolism like crash into nothingness as a result of eating in a deficit. These are things that your body does have counterbalancing homeostatic like set points that it changes to in order to you know counterbalance the fact that you're not eating enough food to maintain your weight, but you still cannot like get around the fact that it takes energy to operate and function just fucking sitting there. So 
Anyways, I don't recommend doing this, obviously. This is just an extreme example to completely obliterate the thought that you can just, you know, eat nothing and still not lose weight. Like, it just makes no fucking sense. So, um, close tracking, oftentimes, and also energy expenditure, you know, miscalculations and, you know, lack of, you know, real, real, like, data. The real fucking accurate data is typically the uh, bottleneck for a lot of individuals. And they end up, you know, thinking they're in a 400 deficit when in reality they're at maintenance the entire fucking time. And then they give up on their diet and they're like, why did it not work? And it's like, well, you just miscounted a little bit. Like, even if you were 10% off, like that 10%, like cumulatively will fuck you up to a point that you just stayed the same the entire time. So anyways, that's my stance. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments up the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, I'm replacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. Um, my preventative medicine hormone replacement therapy platform. As well, Gorilla Mind Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode Pre-Workout Formulas, Design Myself From Scratch, my recommended diet model for gaining muscle and sports performance, whilst being mindful of micronutrient intake, something that is also critical for supporting hormone synthesis and the cofactors necessary for all of the downstream processes that lead to muscle growth, fat loss, improved body composition, uh, mood regulation, psychological state, emotional fucking stability, um, actual neurological health. Like there are so many things that are supported by adequate micronutrient intake and not just macronutrient intake that go overlooked that are worthwhile to learn about in my opinion. Clothing company that sponsors me, anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.